Okay, one more today. And this is because when I did my video on decks I'm working with in October, I completely left one out. And it's um, one that I've had many copies of. It's very strange. Um, I got my first copy of this deck. I passed it on um, because I wasn't using it or I don't know. <clears throat> then I received another copy. Um, someone was passing it on because they, they didn't get on with it and I said okay I'll take it since I had passed mine on. I passed that copy on um, and then I received <laughs> um, this one in a trade. It was thrown in with other decks, which is funny because I've thrown the I've thrown the same exact de deck in with other people's decks. So, I'm, so what I'm trying to say is, I think this deck is haunted, and not just this physical copy of it, but this deck in general. In my case, is wanting to be with me. And it is the Ghosts, Spirits, Ghosts and Spirits Tarot by Lisa Hunt. So this is a box. Um, so it's one of the decks I'm working with in October, and I think I'm going to hang on to it too for November. It comes with a guidebook, and not guidebook. It comes with a little white book. It doesn't come, you know, it just comes in a tuck box, right? And it um, is. A tarot. Uh, the artist is Lisa Hunt, and and she's also the author. Sorry, the ding sound in the background is my messenger. Um. Yeah. So this is a little white book, and what's really interesting with this deck is that for each card, um, there's a ghost or spirit, and for each card in the little white book, like there's, there's a lot of information packed in this little white book. There's the story of the ghost or spirit that's featured in the card. So, so it's, um, yeah, it's by US Games. It's uh, widely available. And like I said, I don't know which copy, which number copy this is, but I've had quite a few. And I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna hang on to this one. Like I said, this last one was thrown into a trade uh, as an extra or whatever. Someone just wanted to get rid of it. And uh, it's with me now. These are the backs. And I'm of two minds about these backs. I think these backs are adorable, but they don't suit the aesthetic of this deck at all. Because on the back, you have these stark, the stark white borders. You got these little ghosties, which are absolutely adorable. Swirling ghosties, a ghost swirly. And, but then the front of the cards, has this um, off-white like sepia tone and this is pretty much the color scheme of all the cards in the deck. So blues and grays and you know. This is the this is a 79 card deck. This is the extra deck that comes in uh, this is the extra deck. This is the extra card that comes in the deck. I've put them in order for you so we could do a little flip through. Um, so like I said Ghosts and Spirits Tarot, every card um, features a ghost or spirit and the little white book, as little as it is, it's quite, you know, it's quite thick, but as little as this book is, uh, Lisa Hunt has managed to fit in here the story of each ghost and spirit and how it relates to, and in a lot of cases, how it relates to the tarot card it's been assigned. I, for some reason, don't find this deck creepy. I think it's beautiful. I love that it has minimal borders. I don't feel the, I love the font on the bottom of the card. And I know the, uh, the focus is not good. Sorry about that. The I'm losing daylight.
I yeah so I don't find it creepy at all I think it's beautiful I the the borders I think is a nice color match for the art although like I said when you come when you look at the front of the card and then you compare it the backs look like it would be an entirely different deck right I don't care because again love the ghosties An, an interesting thing about this deck, and although I this tarot deck, although I've passed, you know, I've passed a couple of copies of these on to other people, it has a nice energy when you hold on to the deck. And I think the, the main reason I've passed it on is because it calls itself a tarot. See here, instead of devil, it's chains. Um, it calls it. It calls itself a, um, which is chains. Oops. Chains for the Devil is typical of Lisa Hunt. I've seen other decks of hers, flip throughs online, where the Devil is changed to chains. Okay, so cards went flying. What was I saying? Oh, I don't remember what I was saying. Like my someone I love used to say, I can't remember what I was saying. I forgot what I was saying. It must have been a lie. I love that the borders are just straight borders around it, although it's got a stupid ugly copyright on the front here. Um, I've seen other Lisa Hunt decks that, um, I think it's a Celtic dragon, that has um, larger borders than this. I think this is just right. I think it's a nice deck. And it, ha it feels, I like, I like holding it. Oh, that's what I was saying, so it's not a lie. The reason I passed on my other copies to other people was because I don't use it, I, I can't use it as a tarot. It doesn't read for me as a tarot. It perplexes me. Um, I think sometimes I'll look at, let's say, the, I'll, I'll look at a card, and I know what the Ace of Wands is, let's say, in tarot, but then, um, I'll read the guidebook and that confuses me a little bit with how it fits with the ace of wands and it just it perplexes me a little bit however um and it's not and it's so because the artwork is so detailed there's so much going on in each and every card um I could not throw this deck down for a 12 card spread like I normally do a full reading because it would be a lot of noise. A lot of ghosts and spirits. But, as you know, one card, two cards, three cards maximum, three cards maximum, I think it's great. And I think it's great also to use with um, in the place of an oracle beside you know for daily draws where suppose I'm doing a daily draws with um, one tarot deck I think it's nice to use um, this tarot deck although it's a tarot as to take the place of the oracle deck that I'd be doing the daily draws with the uh, ghost stories or like the, the ghost stories ghost bios are from different parts of the world uh, many of these stories I I've, I've never I wouldn't even know about them if it wasn't for this deck and again the only reason I've moved it along I've, I've moved several copies along at least I can count off the top of my head at least three copies is um, because whatever I put in my head that I want to to read it as a tarot. Now Los Carabeo makes, I think it's by David Corsi, um, a ghost tarot. And that one is quite interesting. The backs are kind of weird, the backs of the cards. That one's interesting. It's straight white rider weight, but instead of people, there's these misty white ghostly figures in the place of the people, which on very standard, very traditional Rider weight imagery. And 
although Rider Waite imagery reads well for me and I love the idea of ghosts, ghostly images instead of people, I couldn't get on with that one at all. And I think, a, when I think about it, I think a lot of it has to do with I don't like to read cards in, in very bright lighting. I like to read cards in soft lighting, dim lighting. It's a thing. I've always been that way. Unless I'm reading, I'm doing a reading for someone who, um, like a professional reading for someone in daylight. Well, that's whatever, you know, it's daylight. But you know what I mean? And those, um, those go the ghost tarot by David Corsi requires lighting in order to see what's going on because the cards are very are very dark which makes sense and I don't know I just I just couldn't get on with it but I recommend it if you're looking for a ghost tarot because that one at least is Rider weight based and it's a lot easier to just start reading with it especially you know this season it's the season right um, you want something different in terms of your tarot cards. You want something a little Halloween-y, ghostly, whatever. Highly recommend. They just didn't work for me because I couldn't see them. And we're winding down to the last five cards. The artwork, and you know what? This last deck, I'm gonna hang on to it. This one is, this is going to stay with me. If I don't, if I don't use it, well, I'll be using it this month, and I'll see what happens. As a matter of fact, I've, the reason I'm, I, I forgot, you know, I, w I missed including them in my um, decks I'm using in October video, and then today when I was like, you know, frustrated with your the Halloween Oracle I decided well I'm gonna replace the Halloween Oracle with this all right so that was a quick and dirty um, flip through and talk uh, you know chit chat about um, ghost ghosts and spirit tarot by Lisa Hunt again I think I mentioned it earlier in the video is there something tactile that I really like about this deck. The cards feel nice. Um, the deck is um, nicely weighted. Um, the cards are a little... I don't have a standard tarot deck here. They give the impression of being a, a smidge wider than a standard tarot card, but no, they're not. It's an optical illusion. They appear wider. Wider than a standard tarot deck, but they're not. They're standard tarot deck size. And again, the ghosties. Although it doesn't match the, f the aesthetic of the tarot deck, um, I find them very endearing. So, that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.